This is the process shot. I'm Michael. I'm stuck in the same outfit as yesterday, and I've seen White Hot, the rise and fall of Abercrombie and Fitch. It's a new documentary from Allison Clayman that focuses on the titular clothing company. Once a staple choice of wardrobe for many preppy high school kids, but has since fallen out of favor. Obviously, the documentary explores why this was the case, placing the blame on the corporate culture and its emphasis on physical beauty, which in their eyes led to the exclusion of anybody who wasn't white and attractive. The controversy didn't stop with the general business practices, as it turns out that those corporate guidelines came all the way from the CEO and trickled down the line. Despite the relatively serious nature of the subject matter, this movie seems to want to be flashy, possibly trashy. There seems to be more attention given to how information is presented, almost trying to create a unique aesthetic for the film than anything else. I imagine it's mostly to do with the lack of an inside view of events as they were happening, and so the story itself has to be told through hindsight. As such, the whole thing is presented in a traditional manner, moving back and forth between new talking head interviews and older archival material, with short animated segments to fill in whatever gaps eventually appear. Speaking of which, it seems like those animated shots try to mimic the aesthetic trends of the era and the height of Abercrombie and Fitch's popularity, but if that's the case, then it fails. And if it isn't the case, then it could have tried a lot harder. Anyways, the greater story being told gets pretty tilted quickly in one direction, and then barely tries to hide its position at all. It's not hard at all to tell that it's going to lean in on the company's problems, and not just because those being criticized decline to participate in the documentary at all. It's mostly thanks to the film's structure that this happens, starting things off looking at the company from the outside more as a brand image, before delving into actual company history and culture. It's not too unusual, honestly, but it's more that this focus lasts for the first 15 or 20 minutes of the movie, seemingly setting up the film's overall direction as something entirely different from what you might expect. It also doesn't help that the people we see in these scenes don't really come back into the story until later on. Those first scenes aren't even a bad way of introducing somebody into this story, so I don't know why they weren't placed in the later areas of the film instead of loading them all up front. In any case, after that opening, the movie kind of splits its main story of Abercrombie and Fitch into distinct segments. Like one for the company's beginnings, one for its rebranding, a segment for its advertising and marketing, and of course one long but somewhat speedy segment for its many controversies. Even though it's all presented linearly, it still feels a bit bumpy when it breaks off into other stories, generally just going right into them without a smooth segue, before veering right back into the main storyline. It doesn't help either that it leans into more sensational stories, once or twice stating outright that some of the topics being discussed are only allegations of more serious claims when any other documentary would generally want to stay with proven or verifiable facts. It just makes the final product seem like it never wanted to be a real oral history, but more of an expose of these events and those involved. Coupled with how it's structured and with the flashiness and editing of the animation, I honestly think that this could have been better off as a series of short documentaries rather than a single feature film. White Hot, The Rise and Fall of Abercrombie and Fitch, Allison Clayman, 2022. Two and a half stars. 
It's interesting information, but I wouldn't recommend watching this myself. You'd probably get all the info they cover here faster if it were a written article. That's it for this review. If you liked it, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel for more reviews. I've never cared too much for following brand names. Mostly because I've never cared much for fashion. Jeans and a t-shirt. That's enough for me.